I was born ready, but then, but then the doctor said, "No, wait, put it back, put it back." He's escaping. Uh, you're not coercing them hard enough. You don't, you don't want this. You don't want this. Trust me on this one. You don't want this. You don't want this. You don't want this fuzz, buddy. Because if you do, you'll get AIDS. You'll get mega AIDS that came from outer space. And, uh, how does the joke go? Oh, yeah. Uh, three, uh, AIDS are scary. But you want to know what's even more scarier than AIDS? Super AIDS from outer space. Three teaspoons of super AIDS in your butt. And and you're dead in five years. And it's true too. I swear to swear to God, I swear to G. Heard it heard it from a friend. I had a friend a long time ago. His name was um. What uh, his name his name was, uh, Jam Frank Dirk, Jim Frank Dirk, and. Well, I knew the guy for a while, and he he was a nice he was a nice lad. He went to school. He ate his, did his bed, ate his parents, and he just got in with the wrong crowd one day. It messed him up. He got he did uh he did all those bad things that they uh, talk about in the uh, the dare campaigns and whatever, and then. That was it. That no more junior for bank bank. I don't That's know how that worked. Moral moral of my story there is don't get it. <laughs> Just don't. It's not worth it. <laughs> Sounds cool because all your friends are talking about it, but it's not. And don't. And just and just don't. You know what? And just don't. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the Behind the Fence podcast show, the greatest show ever done behind the fence. Joining me is my totally female, not male at all, completely 100% girl, not a not a boy, uh, co-host, uh, Svetlana. Now, Svetlana, tell us, tell us how how it was to escape from a uh, communist New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> all that communism they've been having over over in uh, Kiwis. You know, <laughs> it, the Kiwis believe in seizing the means of production. They already hey, have. No. Hey, maybe, maybe I'm just being like, uh, and here's the thing, here's the thing, quick disclaimer before we, we talk into the, into the realm of, of politico, um, <laughs> Ari, I'm pretty sure doesn't believe in politics and thinks it's all just movie magic. I myself don't like politics. Uh, I'm a libertarian at heart. Which means I don't give a fuck about anything and or anyone. Do whatever the fuck you want. Just don't pee pee in my coke. Uh, but I, it, cause like communism and shit's all the rage nowadays. Cause all the, going into those gangs and being communist. But no, seriously, I remember. I I genuinely remember trying to <laughs> trying to read uh, the Communist Manifesto 
by Karl Marx, and and no, and hey, Naki, because. Uh, Eric, do you care or whatever? But no, because they make such a big fuss about it. It's like, uh, it's the dream thing. Because it sounds really good. It, like, when you, like, list all the shit about com, it sounds really good. It's just like, hey, uh, let's have everything be good for everybody, you know? The system is set up so, you know, you can't have big, extremely, like, over the top rich people that get too fucking rich and then just start being mean to everybody else. It's a system where uh, everybody is kind of you know, on the level, everybody has a nice level playing field. But I, rem <laughs> I remember when I was 11 and I'm fucking, not 11, but I was a youngin. I th no, I think I was probably like 15 or something. I'm playing I'm playing the uh, first Bioshock on 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 my Xbox, and I, my buddy Rahabi, because I don't know why we got into the topic of talking about communism, and and he goes and tells me, because uh, you remember Bioshock and like the entire premise for it, right? And how it was kind of communistic. It was kind of like this big utopia where everybody well. No, it wasn't really communist, because even in the game, uh, Andrew Ryan is very anti-capitalism, anti but also anti-communism. But he, he's just like, you know, no no rules, no laws, it's, it's kind of anarchy, but we're gonna have, like, some civility and, like, do whatever you want. If you want to draw a painting of, 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 a, a baby doing a backflip, you don't gotta worry about some critic saying, um, this is gonna, this should yeah, be Yeah, because censored, he's dead. Gonna... He's already been killed. <laughs> That's because you went over there and shot his, you shot, they killed him. Yeah, but... nobody can critique you if he's not alive. Smart, uh, you know? Th uh, thinking meme, they can't criticize you if they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, you know what, that, uh, that's, that, you that was, I think that Wait, wait, wait. We got, we got an threat. angry, angry death threat. There we go. You're there both go. pieces of shit. And if you don't do it yourselves, I'm gonna come house and concave your skull with a two by four. Yes. Here. Okay, I'm gonna just for the sake of fucking yes uh, improv. And just for the sake of improv, I'm gonna yes. give I'm gonna give a fake name. Dear Anthony, we disagree. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I personally will take this 2x4, you know, will have just strictly lodged into Ted's head, and I will cut it into small boxed shape pieces of wood, and then make a smaller house out of them. Yeah. And I shall how enter make a, said house. How you, but how are you going to make a small house out of a fucking 2x4? That's not enough wood. Well, That's if you cut you the 2x4 into a 1x4 and then cut the 1x4s into 1x1s, you get lots of small pieces of wood which you can glue half. together <laughs> and then you can build a house. You glue them together? <laughs> so by wood together in 2017. <laughs> yeah, by actually, th you know, giving us that free piece of 2x4, you're actually... Uh, helping people us. build so, affordable housing for the poor. So, yeah. Good job, Anthony. You, you, you're doing the law's work. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the uh, chance to literally dislodge pieces of wood <laughs> out of our brains so we can make a house out of it. A tiny house, by the way. Yeah, but... it's, it's going to probably just be a birdhouse or something like, like, like really small maybe an insect could live in it but it's still more affordable than your standard issue uk apartment and yeah. your standard issue fuck even uk trailer oh lord it reminds me from uh watching sargon as uh, oh here it comes everybody's gonna yell at me because i watch sargon but no he was he, he was talking about like how uh the mortgage rates were in certain parts of england I swear to God, some places in England are considered middle, middle income, middle uh, class, 
neighborhoods that are supposedly have properties of that uh, earning bracket, but it's like these houses cost nearly a hundred and twenty thousand pounds to to like buy them. And I'm thinking, holy shit, I could I could go out into the red, white, and blue yonder of the U of S A, and I could buy a shitty, broken down house for fifty four thousand dollars. And you know what I would do with the rest of that money? Build small, affordable housing for insects. Build small, tiny houses <laughs> out of wood to fill up my shitty house with. <laughs> and then I would leave it. I would leave it like that. I would abandon the property. So so it could generate fucking spooky stories or whatever. <laughs> the house of insects. <laughs> the house of insects. Long ago, they said that insects roamed the house freely. They dismantled the furniture. They dismantled the furniture and the plyboards and the walls and made little houses. Long has time passed since these insects have dwelled here and they have left. And then there's the spooky sort of, um, not a governor, but more likely a, um, Gentleman friend to mayor, the I guess. Owner. He's a little portly. He has a big, wide, wide grin. Yeah, and he's like, Yes, like, yes, master, get the knives, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, the security deposit will be 250 plus first month's rent. Yes. No, he's <laughs> no, going to be the groundskeeper. Imagine, but imagine if he was just completely normal. Like, there was nothing, sp like, he was spooky, but there was nothing supernatural about him. He was just, like, a regular dude who did, but it's, he just looked like he was some kind of paranormal bullshit. Just like, mm -hmm. would you like to rent this? <laughs> yeah, he's like that, um, you ever played, like, Fallout New Vegas? Yes. So, uh, have you Oh gotten... wait, no, let me preface that. I tried to play Fallout New Vegas. How do and... you try to play Fallout New Vegas? Well, because I made a character, I went out into the wilderness, and then I spent like two hours just walking in one direction. <laughs> yes. And then that, that was gameplay for me. That was gameplay for me for like two runs. Because I kept going to like people and they were just like side quest, side quest, side quest, side quest. And nobody just wanted to tell me like, yeah, go over there. The game wouldn't really tell you or even like point out in the slightest bit. Oh yeah, you got to go over there to find the dude and you know, I've bury the MacGuffin in your Vegas ass or some in shit. fucking six hours. Um, like... I haven't finished it. I've it played is... for six hours and got no closer to finishing it. I don't know what you did, but there's this like uh, mission where you help a um, sort of cult of feral ghouls, like people who have been. Personality? No, no, no. More, more like um, a religious group of ghouls, who are like people uh, with really, really oh, high you mean... damage from you know radiation and whatever. Oh, and... I thought you were about to mean because you know in the game there was that one like group of ghouls that had um that one scientist fucker and they believed yeah. that like they came from the moon and he was like I'm gonna yeah. take you back to the moon you guys yeah and that guy who's like actually a normal fucking cunt is like yes I have this really really deep cigarette chain smoking voice I'm a ghoul <laughs> he's normal but he's like yes I am a ghoul. <laughs> Yeah, Do so, not be confused by my clean skin. Yeah, he literally called you smooth skin. Oh, really? <laughs> that feel when you've just been living around turkey bacon people for so long, you just start to convince yourself that you're them. Yep. Plain and simple. But, so, so that's oh. basically the landlord of our uh, new insect hotel. In the middle of nowhere it's, in the... He's a completely normal <laughs> dude, but he's convinced he's one of the turkey bacon people. Yeah. And he tells you, Would you like to rent this apartment? <laughs> it's 850 a month, plus your Yeah, and he's like a really 
Balty sorts of uh, just finished university twenty four year old. <laughs> he's, just, like... he's sporty. He's a Chad. He's a Chad, but like on the outside, but on the inside, he is Noth Ghoul. Uh, yeah, he, he just the reads the ancient... Necronomicon before bed every night. <laughs> uh, he prays. He prays to all the Lovecraftian gods. Yeah. He was like. Man, what's going to make me seem more ghoulish and cultic? Yeah, he Which did it to impress his old girlfriend, who actually left him for an insect. Yeah, he, he tried to impress her with uh, his knowledge of the eldritch arts and uh, black magic, but <laughs> and with his apparently little insect it was not hotel. enough. Yeah, apparently it was not enough. And that she grasshopper an just... At the hotel. Yeah, she just took that grasshopper and married him, and now they have, like, kids. Still in cocoons, though. Don't you have though, grasshopper but... people in Fallout? Or do the, the, you? They were like really, really big praying mantises? Manti? I don't know. Just, like... oh, that uh, reminds me of... Do you, you, you remember Portal 2, right? And there was that one part in Portal 2 uh, where uh, Cave Johnson was just talking some nonsense about uh, new speed gel. Uh, also, uh, some of the people who used the speed gel or had like these and shit put in them, some of them may have turned into giant praying mantises. So, if you homeless people that we dragged in here, if you want to earn another fifty dollars, please go into the yellow line and grab a rifle and get ready to put these sons of bitches down. Every headshot will earn you five dollars extra. Oh, so we need to think... play Portal 2 on co-op and finish it, like on cast. Hell yeah. We should hey, do that. Uh, God, I, tr I tried. I tried to play that game with my <laughs> like, wife. Considering how smart we both are, we're, we're going to be there forever. <laughs> hey, we're going to breeze through Portal 2. What do you mean? Easy. I can think. Like I have Dota. brain. <laughs> yeah, really don't, good, hey, Dota. okay. I, uh, I don't know why everybody tells me this, but I was fine in Dota. I looked at the VODs, I auto-attacked, I bought items, and I clicked, I moved around. I did everything, it's, it's I not did enough. everything. Dota requires to you to do more than simply walking, which you Papa, clearly failed I did at. everything I was supposed to. Please let me drink water. <laughs> no, it is left for the Mantis people, son. <laughs> You never get that what's the sources. <laughs> what? The what? The what? <laughs> the water sources. <laughs> Dude, I thought you said Waltz or Seltzer. What's that? I don't know. It's, it's a thing for the lizard really. people. They pray to it. We don't understand it. Those who volunteered to me and Chickler were praying Mantis DNA. We've got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is we're postponing these tests indefinitely. Good news is I've got a much better test for you. Finding an army of mantis men, pick up a rifle and follow the yellow line. You'll know when the test starts. Yeah. And and you know what? They should they should have included they should have included that bit in the game, because because there was the entire bit in left in in uh, Half Life Two. Where you're like you're looking down like the underground tunnels that go to the random places of the world and you're going through and you come to the one tunnel and it's all bolted and shut off and then uh, a alex just looks at she's like oh that's the uh tunnel to ravenholm we we don't go to ravenholm we don't talk about that place so it sh it should have just been like that announcement was going the mm -hmm. army of fantasy men but then they like just shut the place off and bolted it down but yeah. they should have they, they should have had a part in the game where it was like oh sorry you can't go like through this tunnel because this one's uh broken down so uh how about we we gotta go through the mantis people room do, instead. do you remember and the you lemon rant yes like, the lemon, uh, when life gives, life you, gives lemons, you lemons take make the life lemons take back. the lemons back make life rue the fucking day fuck you life Fuck you and your lemons. You invent. You want to give me lemons? I'll fuck your mouth and your sister. I'll make. I'll grab my smart boys. They'll take your lemons. They'll turn them into a bomb. You hear me? I'm gonna bomb your house. Life, take that shit, bitch. Best shit.
He's just, I, he's just so I good. I think that's how it went, right? Yeah, just about that. It's a combustible just... lemon grenade or something like that. <laughs> Burn and your high stone. <laughs> You know what? The fact that so many of the, so much of the brilliant shit that came out of Cave Johnson's mouth, the fact that none of it became something interactable, playable, or seeable in in all of the games, in both one and two, pisses me off to no extent. Because that would have made the games a billion times better. They would have been. They a can't really give Shell a, a gun, can they? No. Oh, they gave her a portal gun. I mean, well, yeah, it's, based but it's off of... not necessarily a gun. It's mostly non-violent, unless you consider yeah, killing it... personality calls a uh, an act of violence. <laughs> it's very violent. Well, I mean, you're killing. You're not killing a person. You're essentially just killing a consciousness via, I guess, throwing it out into space. But even then, they don't die because. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Wheatley is still technically alive, just kind of floating through space. Yeah. Space! Stop, stop, uh... stop, 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 space. I love space, 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 I love, I love space. I, won I wonder, whatever would have fucking happened if, if Wheatley got picked up by just some alien? Port tool three, but you know, Valve is allergic to the number three, so we're never gonna get it, so okay. No, you know what? I actually have hope. I actually have hope. <laughs> you know why? Because in 2004, I watched a video that had concrete proof, okay? In in 2000, I not E3. in 2004, I meant to say. I meant to say 2014, but in 2014, <laughs> the company Valve took out patents. They took out patents for the Half-Life 3 trademark name, logo, and intellectual prop. So they just basically said Half-Life 3 is trademark. They took out a patent at the U.S. Patent Office for it. And it had a renewal period of two intervals, both which last 10 years apiece. So. Two intervals. And that was in... And that was in, that was in 2014. That was in 2014 when those were taken out. And the initial patent lasts... Five years, and after then they have the options of taking those two renewal processes. So essentially, they have let's see, five, fifteen, twenty-five. They have twenty-five whole years to keep to keep the Half-Life Three patent. They took it out in 2014, and they have a base period of five years to hold the patent from them. It has been. Three of those five years so far. So if Half Life is not out by 20. If Take it's not out matter. by 2019, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna cry. I'm gonna go up to Gabe. I'm gonna be like, G Gaben. I'm gonna have some chairs. And I'm gonna be like, beef. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm gonna go up to him because there's gonna be two chairs there. I'm gonna sit down with him, and I'm gonna go, Gaben. He's gonna be like, yes. I tell him, I fly three. It's, it's not coming out, is it? And he's gonna tell me, most likely, I can't tell you. That. It's a and then he presses the eject button, and you fly away. <laughs> no, and then I'm gonna cry, right? In front no. <laughs> but I, I have a feeling like he's just gonna press the uh, fucking he, eject here's button. Here's an old battle pass for Dota or Counter Strike. There you go, Ted. Be happy. <laughs> Please give us money. <laughs> It's not, it's not coming out, is it, Gaben? Look. All right, hear me out here. Here's all of, all of the games on Valve. Here's the secret Valve black box gift. Take take it. Take all of it. Yeah, it's the orange box, but it's dusty. And it's got, like, a, a crust of, of flesh and oh, matter geez. around it. So it's become really, really bad for anybody. Some, to, of, the, to... some of the employees take their breaks on that box. <laughs> Sorry if it smells. We'll take it. 
but take it, you know, it, it's yours. You, you deserve no, have, it. Have you heard about it? Okay, I remember, uh, I saw it on 4chan, uh, like four years ago or something, and uh, Valve, feel free to, you know, chime in and disprove us or give us confirmation or validation or whatever. The it's going to be a death threat, most likely. Yeah. Um, probably, but uh, this is what I remember of this thing. It was, it was a, um, somebody made, like, uh, a, a game, not a game, no, somebody had a screenshot and posted a screenshot, and it, in the screenshot was, uh, like, your little library with gifts, like little gift things, yeah. and, like, a Steam library, and it was, a uh, Valve employee here, ask me anything and somebody and somebody asked them in in the screenshot there was a bunch of like stupid questions because of course when you have a valve employee you're gonna ask them stupid when is questions. the csgo 2 gonna happen these graphics are already 2017 i can't take it why when are you got a mic and gun for call of duty <laughs> uh, but in somebody asked in the screenshots like what is this screenshot of because it's just like a black box in your steam gift library and what is this and the dude goes on to explain i hope i've told this to somebody before because i couldn't believe it myself and i'm not sure if this is true or not so that's why i say valve chime in to correct us or whatever it's apparently when when you become an employee at valve you are basically either given a an employee's steam account or if you already have a pre-existing steam account it is like upgraded and turned into a employee's steam account and what you get immediately in your employee's steam account is the ultimate valve black box gift that black box gift when you open it on your account will essentially allow your account to have every single Steam game, just uh, uh, outright every single game that is hosted and uploaded onto Steam, including any new releases. Anything that's newly released, put on Steam, you will also have that. Yeah, this they have this all thing of the little for, uh, for journalists and, uh, you know, TV and just media people, uh, they had a sort of, you know, lower level account. Uh, not really employee, but mostly just like, oh, okay, you're part of this uh, media outlet. Let's give you access to a sort of review account where you could just click on a button and get this video game, review it, and then, you know, you, I don't know what you, you can, do with it. Then you can give us the account back. Probably well, no, not gonna give us the account. It's actually just a flag they put on your account. I think Jim Sterling has one still. Uh, and he basically has like 3,000 of, of those Steam games. You know, some of them uh, he's bought, some of them are review copies and whatever. So, uh, yeah, those do is, exist. Uh, because he is a game journalist extraordinaire. Yeah. So. Uh, one day, you know, the, the goal of everything we do here is to uh, get access to those uh, black box accounts and uh, basically, yeah, oh god, play all our the near automats on release. That that is that is our goal dream: getting or con somehow convincing uh, Valve to give us that fucking black box steam gift because right. i want every fucking game on steam i don't know about anybody else i want those goddamn steam games you know how we're gonna do it like we're gonna take the source 2.0 engine which i think coercion like dota friendly or... coercion by gunpoint no like csgo or dota run on source 2.0 so we're gonna take that we're gonna spend like those 25 years uh, where, you know, the pattern still exists, and we're gonna make Half-Life 3 for them, 
and it's gonna be like the best game fucking ever. We we're gonna we're gonna have people like most likely me just working twenty four hour oh. shifts while uh, you give me an animal with uh, burgers and you know whatever. And, and then they'll have to hire us. Yeah, then they'll have to hire us because we've already made the video game and it's it will be a shame if it goes anywhere. Um, it's already running fucking... Source and, you know, it's got uh, a code base behind it. So then they'll, they'll just feel obliged. Like, we could take it down, but why don't you hire us and we'll help you make this game for you? We're, we're going to do the old uh, Counter-Strike Team Fortress thing. Like, make a really good mod, but get ourselves hired, and then, oh baby, we're, we're, we're gonna get this new, uh, this new video game you, you got over there. Oh, when is it coming out? I don't know, I got a, a black box in my inventory, it doesn't, it doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> when, when, when will this new game be coming out, gentlemen, exactly? By the time we burn through all of this... <laughs> NJ, what is that? I never disclosed anything except my black box. Mm -mm. My boot black box. We're not... NDA, that's what it stands for. Not disclosing anything. Anytime. Not disclosing anytime. Agreement. No, mm -hmm. no. NDA, that stands for not doing anything bad. Yeah, the B is silent. Uh, no. Because M dab doesn't sound as good. It, uh, uh, what was that one? Yes, it was um, the St the Stanley Parable. Uh, good game. The game that I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't stop calling it a parable. It's a parable. Or a parabola. It's a parabola. Same it's thing. a word. It's 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 a it's a phrase. It's a phrase that means. I fucking guardy. A simple story is to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. Wait, that's a parable? Yep. That game didn't have any Jesus in it. I I remember. I don't know. My I my played, version had Jesus. Like quite a I played it. the original Stanley's parable, the one that didn't work an entire fucking game. Because Re remember there was the. Uh, the first kind of like original yeah the source mod of, of like half-life or gary's mod or whatever it was on i think I know, it was, it was half -Life. a half-life yeah. yeah they just kind of worked worked it out a little bit but uh well, like source is readily available you know you, you you could download hammer or whatever and just make maps and shit for, for i believe counter-strike right now and it, it was just it and was team just fortress i believe games. It was just one of those games that like really had. It's like, hey, we we uh, check it. We've made this entire wonderful and beautiful story uh, to go with uh, to go with this shit. And I played the first one. That was it was about what an hour long or some fucking shit. Mm, probably somewhere around that. But uh. Couldn't stop calling it parable. <laughs> also, I played it drunk. I remember that part. I played it drunk as fuck, and the whole existential no, whatever just really flew over kinda, your head. <laughs> it, it, it did fly over my head because I was just like, oh, really? Uh, Nothing is real. Everything is TVs. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I'm... I. I Mom, suppose. I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> Mom, I don't want to go to the TV show. Don't make me go to the TV show. And yeah. un unfortunately, it kind of forced you to go into the TV show. I never wanted to, but it, ma it made you go in there. And I then think it's I supposed actually, to have like, played uh, supposed the Stanley to... Parable for my 100th episode of Otelay TV. Was it? Yeah, like a hundred. The uh, the the proper one, not the proper one, but like the full one, right? Yeah, the full one, the standalone one. Uh, I, I believe they enjoyed like quite a bit. I enjoyed the story to it. I enjoyed the fact that they, you know, put together 
a big old, you know, uh, look at this shit. It's, we have a story. We have characters. It just had multiple it, it's though, more than just TV. Yeah, one of the achievements, like, I, I had to go into my BIOS to switch the date and time on my motherboard just to fool the, uh, the game into thinking I played it for the entirety of a Thursday. <laughs> BIOS. Yeah. Wait, so you literally just fucking mechanically tricked the game into thinking that uh, you played it when you didn't? Yep. But why? Because who'd fucking play the Stanley Parable for 24 hours? Me? I, I'd already exhausted all the possible endings in that video game. There's like a chart. It's like, it's like why the fuck not? You know, who? Uh, sometimes he's got to put put the hours in. Play 24 hours of Stanley Parable. I'm fucking terrible. wasting fucking electricity and processing power for that. I'm a computer man. I I know how to do the shit. I could use my time, you know, different ways. And you know, yeah, just like keeping the, the Stanley Parable open. Stalking women on on yeah, social media. On Instagram and just liking their pictures and awkwardly saving them to a Dropbox folder. You know, it, it, I could totally make better use of my fucking time. You know, it's, I. Can, can I can I give out uh, an unpopular opinion that I think a lot of people are gonna find? I don't like Dropbox. I don't I mean, like it. It's fine. I don't like. I don't like cloud-based shit. It's clouds just are for rain. Clouds are for rain and snow and weather things, not for humans to put their big old fancy files into them. <laughs> All right, God didn't create this world and the clouds in the sky for us to be inconsiderate assholes putting our stupid shit up in up into the up into the clouds okay yeah there's just not a cloud right. tied right above the google headquarters and there's like a single ethernet wire just coming down from it into somebody's computer <laughs> no no and not he's... even not even like an e imagine if it wasn't e uh cable it was just it was just a big old cloud and uh what you gonna call it the big old cloud was a uh, like tied down to the uh tied down to the fucking whatchamacallit tied down to uh like the google building by chain and and the way that they put like shit in the cloud is that they just walk out they yank the chain so that the uh the cloud comes down like a little closer and then they just like literally take folders like physical folders of Okay, so this of has... Out documents and pictures and videos. Yeah, just like frame that by shit. frame and just and throw them just into the cloud. Threw that shit into like the literal cloud. And I was like, there you go. And it's all safe in there. And if you want to get your files back out of it, all you have to do is yank the chain again and. Uh, Make a wish. Yep, yank it one more time and. Uh, I mean, I make a wish, and just kind of have it uh come like close enough so you could reach your hand in, and uh put grab all the your fucking uh, folders or whatever. Yeah, and, and then, then the Google executive who yeah, took your boy. file, and uh, they go over, take like one of the fifteen billion scanners they have in their office. No, it's actually one scanner. <laughs> Like for the entire Google offices, and they One use it to to, to to just scan everything that comes out of the cloud, make it into a file again, and then put it back onto the internet, and they send it to you by you know Google Cloud by or whatever, yeah, by Dropbox or whatever, <laughs> like Google Drive. Uh, <laughs> uh, you ever th you ever think that one day and. God, video games have forced so many philosophical questions into my mind. And it's speci I'm specifically thinking about Halo 4 and 
Hello, that You're... doesn't bring up any philosophy, you know, mate. No, think about mm. it. There was that entire part where one of the forerunners possessed a body and then he on a big glowing orb and he made it attack like this place that had a bunch of human beings that were researching and it was a USMC whatever and he, the orb came out and then it started shooting the scanning laser and literally it turned all of the people who were scanned into literal like dust and shit and the, it was a horrifying scene and it was it was really the part where the game developers were showing look Halo can be gritty and brutal too well, I and remember then, getting a book about Halo about Reach I believe Oh yeah, and, the books! Oh my god, I forgot fucking, they had books about that shit. It wasn't bad, it was actually pretty damn fucking good. You know, hey, they had, it, they had a Halo anime. They had a Halo anime, believe they? it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, revolves the plot of Master Chief while he was still a kid, living on some planet, and it revolves around a bunch of the children that were kind of like on that planet with him and then like, I remember at some point them revealing that all the sort of space marine people uh, like Master Chief and everybody was like really adolescents like 14 to 18 year old kids yeah they were ba they were basically little babies <laughs> yeah but no, but no they were just kids they were just literally kids and they lived on I know for a fact of a fact that Chief is not an Earthborn kid, but I uh, some of, some of the kids who came to like this place where they were taken, some of them were Earthborn kids, and uh, along along with Master Chief, they get kidnapped and they get taken to Reach, where they're essentially and they're kidnapped by like the Halo version of what would be the CIA. Because in the, in the Halo world, you had the USNC, the United Air and Space Defense Force, and you had uh, the uh, the Naval Intelligence whatever. And it was the Naval Intelligence whatever people that were kind of in charge of the uh, the Spartan program, as they called it. And they kidnapped, they literally kidnapped kids. They just kidnapped a whole shit ton of kids from their parents. Chief was one of them who were kidnapped from their parents, and they were taken to Reach. And I think the entire anime was literally just about, uh, here is Chief's adventures of trauma and childhood repression by being taken to an unknown planet with all these other kids. Some of them he knows, some of them he doesn't know. They're basically being turned into super soldiers via surgeries, uh, clinical injections, uh, brutal training, both physical combat, weaponry, and then finally a uh, doctor, a doctor, that's what she called herself in, in the video game, uh, Reach, uh, a doctor, whatever her face was, old lady with gray hair, <laughs> to Mrs. Uh, old Lady Spartan's program, <laughs> old lady yeah. kidnaps her kids. Uh, so yeah, old lady kidnaps your kids, uh, is experimenting on a bunch of shit, and then she comes up and invents the Spartan armor. And a bunch you of the kids... remember something about that. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of the kids are outfitted. No, no, remember on Reach, when you, like, go to some place, it's like the second mission, and you have to save her, and you and all your little, like, you know like third gen spartan armor wearing buddies it's you carter cat emile george and then your you who is just no uh carter the main guy cat the girl emile the cool guy that everybody liked uh J june i think june or something I don't know. he was the sniper guy he was the sniper guy that had the uh, cool visor helmet that i liked and he also wore the uh the scarf and then George, the big gunnery, who also had the cool armor that everybody liked. Uh, it was your little ragtag team there. And then you, and you were only known as the rookie. And you come you come up to the fucking scientist lady in the second mission, and she goes, oh, Private George. She's like, ma'am. And he was, she was like, what are you doing with my armor? Because apparently he like, had some 
shit at it. It was just like, ask just some modifications, some additions, ma'am. Not too bad. Because he was Bulgarian. George was Bulgarian, yet <sighs> talked so Brit Bondish. But he was he was great. I actually liked his character a lot. I liked the sacrifice that he made. Truly, I don't believe he should have, since as I liked him more. I wish he didn't have to be sacrificed. But I very much appreciated his sacrifice, and it just made his character seem all the more better. And at the same time, it made a. Uh, it made who you call it. It made it. It made him seem it's like, oh, he's not. He's not a big, gruff space marine. He's actually a dude. You know, he's he's a nice guy, nice little fella who uh, uh, does does good and will be nice to people. Also, because they have that one section where you're the villagers in the very first mission, and. Uh, they are also speaking Bulgarian, so he's like, hey, speak your language. Don't worry, kids, I'm not bad man. We are not bad people. We're here to help. But they didn't believe it, because that's not what the Spartans were made for. You know what a Spartan no. is made for? Killing fucking demons on Mars. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, you know who's really made for that? Doom Man. That's his yeah. primary job. Hey, you, you did you did a segue with a little bit of help. That was Hell that was really see. nice. We, we did a tag team on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing nobody Doom... will notice. Uh uh. Does Doom Guy even have a name? No, he's just Doom or, Guy. Or the or Doom Slayer ident... or whatever. The Doom Slayer. Well, yeah, I guess like... I guess he kind of is a doom slayer. Well, is 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 what was happening on Mars and that could could that be considered doom? Doom in action, doom in progress. Like probably, but like I I downloaded the album, you know, by Mick Gordon, who does the soundtrack for the new one. And every now and then there's like these snippets of uh, of a demon talking about doom guy. And like the very last. Oh, they one... actually have monologue about it. Well, no, it's particularly just on the album a bit. But it was a demon guy just talking like really flowery prose about how the Doomslayer fucked their shit up like years ago, and then some of their you know demon sorceresses, wizards, priests, or whatever. Uh, just trapped him in a sarcophagus and buried him so fucking deep uh, with like so many warning signs pointed at that box that you know do not let this man out crazy you, and dangerous yeah you're gonna fucking open this shit and it's, and it's gonna go real bad for you like really bad for all of us and your families and everybody related to you in any way over the past like 11 generations they're all gonna be dead and it's gonna be your fault. Because you you let th this fucker out. Yeah, he like the He is like... the perfect killing machine. He's the perfect murder man because he just rips through things, doesn't doesn't even flinch. He's just the greatest murder person in the world. Like the thing I like about like the new Doom guy. Let's say, you know, he's a sort of evolution of the old one from the, like, uh, 1990s Doom guy. Sword evolution. They took, they took him from 2D and they made him 3D. Yeah, and just seeing how much personality they can give him uh, by just, like, putting two really beefy, muscly, armoured arms uh, in front of a, you know, camera. And just doing small things like when you get those collectible Doom Marine figures and he like fist bumps them. It's a sort of, you know, thing. He's like, he has a really quirky personality for being a, a just gory killing machine. Like, even when he dies in, you know, the lava at the foundry or whatever, um, like every time you jump into lava, he like just does one final bit where he just 
clenches his fist and does, you know, the Terminator 2 uh, thingy where it just thumbs up and slowly fades into the lava. I loved that reference. That tickled. That tickled my my my, bo my bone. Yeah, and even then, like at the very start of the game, they're, they're trying to you know hit you with all the exposition. You know how you know important this character is to the story, and then he just takes the fucking computer and pushes it into the fucking wall, and you know cracks his knuckles and cocks the shotgun and just goes out and just. Yeah, he basically. The only thing that's really important to him is killing demons. He doesn't care about any ulterior motives or, you know, being part of a bigger plan or something. He just fucking hates demons. <laughs> it's just like, ulterior motives, bigger plan, larger picture, you know, the whatever. It's too much. That's too complicated. I just I chainsawed a motherfucking I don't care demon about into the fucking ground and stomped his entire everything, and it made a big boom. It was red. It was hideous, but it was, it was what I liked, and that's basically what I like about the new team. And the multiplayer is really fucking good. Truly, like the 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 pinnacle, the pinnacle of like. This is Doom Guy. The pinnacle of what his character was was the first time when uh, that doctor dude, whatever, says, You gotta go to these energy filter things because all the energy is going cr crazy and it's, you know, making things blow up and this bitch is it's using it to make demons come out of the floor and fuck. And he's like, Okay, we, I know how to stop this, Doom Man. I'm gonna tell you how to stop this. You gotta go to the, the energy things. You gotta slowly, you gotta slowly take him, and, and he's and he's saying all of that as like the doom guy approaches them, and, and he's, yeah, like, he's like clenching and, and his like, fucking the fist is, and just the, the thing is into opening. the thing and rips it. <laughs> like, the thing is opening. He's like, okay, just slowly take that out, press it's that really button, volatile, slowly be slide to <laughs> no, <laughs> good, breaks all of it. Yeah, and it and just rips can... it, and it still works. And you're like, yes, <laughs> this is what I wanted. You and you, you could, re you could really hear. It's just like the moment he's like, oh, this doctor man is confusing. Burns his dreams. Yeah, every the time he, he sort just... of forces himself, like y you can feel his muscles like clenching bit by bit, and it's like this really, really punchy sound. Where you just feel like every time he bends a finger, it's like snapping a fucking head off. <laughs> He's snapping off like the particles in the air, yeah. just with his fingers and shit. But he, the he beauty punches of his existence is... into submission. <laughs> it's just like hearing hearing the fucking the the, the dude it was just it was just says uh, like the, the the one guy who's not the one guy but the uh, doctor who's telling you this as you're just smashing this shit you can just hear him going you mm. fucking <laughs> yeah he's, and he's he's just he's just completely just saying like uh you're not you don't have to break this you don't have to do it like that you can really hear him just clenching his teeth like god god damn, god, god damn. yeah and another thing is like uh all those Why retina scanners or fingerprint scanners well you know you don't have the biometric data to actually you know access certain doors and everything no he just rips the head off a thing punches it into the fucking slot where it needs to scan it scans and then he throws it it's like yes or even he just like rip the hand off an engineer or something place it on the thing and you see like it making a smear as it goes down you know being pulled by gravity and it's just oh i love it or you know he could have just he could have just you know taken it taken the uh the, the person lifted him had to use his thing or whatever he had you know against the scanner and then there you go but you're not you're not a tank you're not really the true tanky big uh doom guy unless you're ripping some shit off of another guy i mean he doesn't really be. care he, he's dead anyway 
and there's gonna be a lot more dead anyway. Wait, is he technically undead in in Quake? I'm in Quake. Uh, they're the same game. Don't judge me. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're no, basically they're not. the same. Quake and Doom is basically the same game, just a different title and developer and programmers and graphic artists and level designers <laughs> and story and game flow and yeah, game mechanic. Are we talking about League of Legends? And writers. And no, they're basically the same game. I mean, they're kind of made by the same guy. Uh, they're made mostly by the same guys. Okay. Well, I mean, everything just game. came out of John Carmack's just fingers touching a blessed keyboard at some point. But everything uh, came out of it. You think if we split his skull open, we could find, we could dig in there, find a couple of more games. I mean, the guy was really bloody good. You know, to be honest, he he found. Um, like, oh, I'm not gonna go on a, on a tangent because I've talked about the technology of Doom already like two times, I believe. Uh, but he's actually pretty fucking good at programming and designing shit out of the fucking blue. Just does it. You know, he has he a was the, knack um, for it. Oh yeah, he um uh, he started uh, Wolfenstein off of the uh, the catacomb. Uh, what should I call it? off of the catacomb prototypes which was supposed to which still supposedly was supposed to be uh wolfenstein 3d now you know but you, you you know who i don't like now that we're mentioning you know nice people who did nice things you know who i don't fucking like john romero you son of a bitch you were supposed but to make die katana good <laughs> and you know but he's still and he's still this big flowing lock of 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 man and game developer and you know what that's not fair he should have lost he should have like all of his hair should have fell out <laughs> after fucking after motherfucking die katana he should have he should have went bald after that you get to make you get to be like an industry defining individual you get to shit on everybody's hearts and dreams and you still get to keep your hair after that? Look at Tim Willits. Look at uh, Tom Hall. He's losing his hair slowly. Look I mean, at Adrian look at Carmack. Blow. He has a wig. <laughs> just, just look at Jonathan Blow. He look lost at all Peter his hair. Molyneux. He doesn't even have hair. <laughs> and he's done great things. You, you, Why do you get to keep your hair? What's so fucking special about you? <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, granted, uh, Doom, Doom 2, Doom 3, Doom 3 was 3D. slightly banned. Quake. Wolfenstein the New Order was actually pretty damn good. Like, uh, dual-wielding automatic shotguns is, is a thing that just instantly makes everything better. You know what? They took, they took a page out of the originals book, out of, like, 007, and the old ones and then they remembered man what what is it really that people loved about these games was it the tight controls was it the fluid gameplay what really was it and then when you look deep in you figure out you could dual wield two giant ass fucking beretta, beretta 50 cals yep. with just that's just it was like uh, you feel like dual wielding shotguns uh, well, there's a shotgun in that other corridor, so maybe you're gonna want to fit. Maybe you're gonna want to get in on some of that. You want to dual wield some shit? We got some shit for you to dual wield. You wanna, you wanna be a rock star? I've got ten, ten odd big machine guns with your name on it. And th they figured out the formula to fun, which it's, it's was give. Good. Yeah, just. They figured out the formula to fun, which is give me all of the big, cool fucking guns and yeah, just let me roll it's with it. It's a power fantasy. It's like, oh, like what? What can we do to make this weapon particularly really, really good? Well, we've got the BFG 4000, which first of all fires a single massive projectile that throws lightning tracking things all over along with 16 smaller projectiles on the same screen that home in and also fire individual lightnings and then explode okay 
uh, how do we make something better than that? Okay, build upon that and make just the entire screen wipe where you just fire a single shot out of it. Mm -hmm. Or let's let's go another step further. Toxic lightning chainsaw whip. <laughs> no. Video. Let's go. Let's go for that. Well, let's go to that ultimate extreme. That big. That big. That ultimate. That next level extreme. Hey, and you can't. All you out there. I know you, and you know who you are, all of you that are looking at a game like Doom, like Quake and shit, and you're gonna say, Oh, it's just a desperate man. They all have the man with their guns. It's uh, the male power fantasy and power trip or whatever. Tell me, women out there, tell me you wouldn't feel like the hardest bitch in the game. Tell me, like, you wouldn't feel like the baddest bitch in the entire industry. I mean, if to be you honest, had, like, if you, you were don't wielding, necessarily believe. I don't know if, like, the new Doom actually points out that uh, Doom Guy, you know, outside of him being called Doom Guy, as uh, being male. I mean, he, he's in his fucking armor. I mean, yeah, you know, he's slightly bit, a, a bit like muscle person guy, you know, he's got like those big meaty hands, you know, he's got, you know, twice the size of my arm, you know, just stacked together in tape with scotch tape, or whatever, it's just, but he's got his, you he's can got, imagine he's got all him the, having a feminine side, you know, <laughs> he's got all the muscles attached to him with scotch tape. Yeah, he just takes muscles and stuffs them against himself. Just absorbs them. I mean, hey, he he could be a he could be a guy. He could be a girl for all we know. I mean, Samus looks like a guy in in all that fucking. Yeah, but he, then if on. you beat the game quickly enough, you could see you were in that eight big bikini and twiddle with your dingle dangle. They really knew how to do it back then. Us, us gamers. It's, it's, uh, it's gamer it was a better. Boys. It was a better time. It was a simpler time. And this mm. time is all the time that we have. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your death threats. Thank you for your patience. This was Behind the Fence Podcast, greatest podcast ever done behind the fence. Tune in next Wednesday when we dingle your dangle. For a change. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's gonna go sexual. Good? It's, it's no, gonna be. Good? It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be. Thank you. The, the best one. It's, it's gonna be everybody's hot. gonna un unzip their pants and just twiddle with the it's dingle. It's gonna dangles. be hot. <laughs> Thank you. And see Crest out. Bye. Fade to music and do. Yeah, do a really weird like radio sweeper thing. Wait, give me a sec. I will do the radio sweep in just a sec. There's no time. Quickly, touch my balls. Quickly. I might be playing quick champions in a bit. On the radio. And now for your regularly tuned outro. Ciao. Collected that day. Yes, you missed it, Stims. You, you missed it. It's... <laughs> Every <laughs> fucking time. No, stop. Reverse. Go back. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Just, uh, it's, it, it and welcome to the Behind the Podcast we show, the greatest it. podcast ever done behind the podcast. Tuning in with me is my co-host, Spicy Southwest Style Chicken. And, quickly quickly uh, do a lightning round of all the topics. Uh, why is it bad to eat two slices of cheesecake in the morning? It, uh, this really morning sucks. I did two slices of cheesecake. Okay, enough. Uh, best night of your night. Uh, yesterday. Best night I, I ever had. Slept. <laughs>
<laughs> all, all of the time. As I was I was out with a buddy. We were drinking. Or he finished drinking, and then he threw a bottle on into somebody's yard. I, just, I looked at him. I told him, "Can you just do that?" And he was like, "Yeah, you can just do that." Next, uh, uh, weird dreams and happy nightmares. Uh, one time I... I had a dream. I was in a big mall. It was all covered in gold, and there were all these men coming to get me. I beaded all of them up. Next, I had a dream where uh, I had. I, I had been forced by my own mother to farm cornflakes. Uh, your first video game... Uh, quickly, it's not scrolling quick enough. Uh, your first, your first video, video game, fun, fun time, time. Lemmy... Uh, okay, uh, fun time. Uh, Starcraft, next. Uh, uh, let me Sunset tell Riders you, for the SNES. Yeah, let me tell you a little something about Hurricanes. Uh, they really suck. They uh, also what they can do is they can make these spirals of rain that float in the sky. Because when I was a little boy and I lived in the Florida land, I had the opportunity to be there while Hurricane Arthur hit, and I all the power went out. So I spent all my time during that hurricane sitting on the window, staring outside, watching the hurricane go. And I swear to God, I literally saw a big spiral of like rain and wind just floating and spinning in the air above the pool that was there in the yard, and it was cool. Uh, also, okay. hurricanes can Next, cause death. Next, uh, Doom, Quake, Super Mario, and other favorite first-person shooters, they're all good. Uh, Doom, next. good, Quake, good, other Quake, not so good, Unreal Tournament, all of them are great, Super Mario, I don't play that, Super Mario Maker, I don't have that, other favorite shooters include Battlefield, 1942, Half-Life, Counter-Struck, Hat Video Game, Swapping Hats, the video game, uh, and next. of course, uh, RT Over Insaner. Uh, yesterday, I was really mad at a uh, woman and decided to torture myself by making myself write uh, 3,000 words per night and doing uh, 15 push-ups per 100 words. I didn't have arms and laid on my black, uh, back on the fucking carpet with a keyboard over my belly button. Uh, next, uh -huh. Dean Ambrose and Renee Young got very married, but I'd marry them both anyway. Those they are got very people. married. It wasn't a normal marriage. <laughs> they got very married. Yeah, uh, Google Dean Ambrose and Renee Young. They're the cutest couple ever, uh, and uh, just marry them. Um, Dean the Ambrose is pretty cute as a man. Renee Young, I don't know who she is, but her name sounds cute. Yeah, uh, the moment when existential dread set in while casting on Twitch every single fucking time. Every day we stream on Twitch, we sacrifice, we we cut off a little bit of our souls. We take yeah. our switch knives, we cut off a little bit of our soul, we put it on a plate next this to our casting equipment. This has been behind equipment. the fence for today. Uh, 11, 12, 13, I can count up to 14 if you believe that. Uh, this has been Seacrest and uh, Spanky McDoodle Nuggets. This is this is all. Good night, Stims. This is Be on good time night. next time, you fuck. Good, good night, Stims, and tune in next week when, like we said, we're going to fiddle your diddle a little bit, see how you like it. Thank you, and good night.